We look forward to Vacation Bible School tonight and all that God is doing in our midst. I'm Pastor John Cowles, one of the co-lead pastors here at Madisonville First United Methodist Church. Our scripture reading today comes from the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Did you hear now the word of the Lord? Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your love that has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the peace that we have with you and the grace in which we stand. Speak to us now, we pray. Hold us. Call us. Transform us. These things we ask in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Christian faith is so simple and straightforward that a child can understand and grasp it, right? Ask any of our children at the church and they can tell you about how God created the world, about how Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and about how the Holy Spirit is God with us. But the Christian faith is also deep and rich, rooted in a God that is bigger and beyond all that we can imagine, and we can live our whole lives, study our whole lives, be in relationship with God our whole lives, and not claim to understand it all, to know all the mysteries, or to have it all together. The revelation of God to us is like that. It is deep and wide. It is plain and mysterious, and it thrives on the balance of both. There are these wonderful, simply straightforward verses from the book of Romans that a lot of us know and recognize, like Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Romans 5, 8, but God proves his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But anyone who's also ever read the entirety of the book of Romans, read it straight through, or if you've tried to lead a Bible study on it, you will know that the book can also be complex and confusing, and its precepts difficult to grasp. What does it all mean? Well, we need it all together as we grow in faith to come to Jesus in simple childlike faith, but also to understand that we will indeed need to grow in our faith and our holiness as we know God and experience God's grace more. So the most basic question for us might be then, what is salvation? What do we mean by this salvation that we talk about in the Christian faith? The answer, of course, can be both simple and complex in the Bible's way of doing things and the way that God reveals God's self to us. Romans 5 that we read starts with, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the verses we read ends with, Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Salvation is both of these things, being made right with God, being justified by faith before God, and also going deeper into the love of God by the Holy Spirit poured out into our lives. Salvation includes, but it's also more than our being plucked from the fires of hell and having the gates of eternal life open to us, although that's amazing and incredibly important, isn't it? You heard us say eternity. 
But it also, salvation includes today and tomorrow and this life as well. In fact, God's work of grace and his work of salvation begins even before we accept it and realize it. In order to be saved, after all, we need to realize our need for forgiveness, our need for God and the availability of this undeserved love and this opportunity for new life because of Jesus. God's grace is at work in our lives before before we even realize it, before we say yes to God, God's salvation is reaching out to us. We call that prevenient grace, grace that goes before us. God starts the work of making us aware of our need that pursues us even in our sin, even in our rebellion. God's grace that is active, reaching out for a relationship with everybody alive, everybody breathing, just some of us are not yet aware of it. God is at work in our lives and the lives of all those around us, hopefully through us, to awaken them to their need of God and grace. We can think of it this way. If we think about God's salvation being like a house, Our journey into the house starts on the porch. The porch is attached to the house. It's the way into the house, but being on the porch really isn't being inside the house, is it? Provenient grace is like that. It's a place to find the door, to make a decision about whether you're going to go through the open door inside or not, to know that you're welcome. This brings us to the doorway of salvation, the entering into the new life that Jesus promises. Life abundant here and life eternal in the world to come. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1 says, justifying grace along with sanctifying grace are these two big components of what we mean when we say salvation. This work of justifying grace is like a doorway that leads into the life of full salvation. By justifying grace, I mean that work of God that happens through Jesus that sets us in right relationship with God. It is the doorway of coming to have faith in Jesus Christ when we turn from our sins. We accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. By God's grace, we are forgiven of our sins and restored to God's favor. It is a change of status before God when we are adopted, born anew as children of God. Experiencing and accepting God's justifying grace is how we enter into a new life, the doorway through which we enter into the life of full salvation. This salvation, this coming into a right relationship with God is, as Romans 5 says, through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not possible on our own power, but it is possible simply by having faith, believing and trusting in Jesus' work and his ministry on the cross and in the resurrection. Jesus has paid the price to atone for our sins, our rebellion. Jesus has defeated death for us so that we might have life eternal. It is through Jesus that we come to have peace with God. Coming into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ through this moment or this process of conversion is just the beginning, though. Verse 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, once we have experienced justifying grace, is ongoing. And through the Holy Spirit, we experience the other part of salvation, the sanctifying grace grace. If justifying grace is the doorway into new life, then sanctifying grace is the inside of the house itself, the new place in which we live, we grow, we explore, we practice new life in Jesus Christ. The work of the Holy Spirit in our life keeps moving and working. It begins when we accept Jesus as our Savior, but it continues to work and change us our whole lives along. But i the Spirit's power, not ours, as we seek to follow Jesus. If justification changes our standing before God, then sanctification, that grace, it actually changes us and how we live, how we relate to others, how we live this life. 
And how does this work of salvation happen? God's love is poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. It is inside the house of salvation that there is much to discover and explore and admire the beauty and the complexity of what God can and will do in us and in God's world. Now, some of you have probably already decided that what I'm saying is a little boring and unnecessary because I use the word sanctification or that now would be a nice time for your Sunday nap and you're starting to yawn. But sanctification really is, what it really is, is not something boring at all, but it's being let inside the most beautiful, fascinating, spacious home you could imagine, and discovering what life will be like there. Entering into salvation is really being given the keys to the castle, keys to the palace, key to the place we need and want to live. And life in Christ is that way, maybe not with the ease that we would associate living in a palace, but with all the joy and comfort and possibilities that that idea presents. There is more to Christ, more to following him, more to this life of following and being made like Jesus through grace than I can talk about in 20 minutes or that we could talk about in a lifetime of experiencing and knowing there is more. This deepest widest love poured out by God, by God's own presence within us through the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, when that deep love gets a hold of us, when it's poured out in us, when grace gets to work making us like Jesus, then we can fulfill Jesus' command to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Sanctifying grace, this grace of being made more and more like Jesus. We receive that part of salvation just the same way we receive justification by faith. We trust in it, we believe in it, we see that Jesus can do this work in our life even though we can't. And entering into this house of salvation is not something we get by trying harder but by acting out the love that God has already poured into our hearts. It's letting the Holy Spirit take control. This sanctifying grace continue to transform and shape us, our lives, to root out our sin and our selfishness and replace it with obedience to Christ and with love. Our scripture passage today talked about the grace in which we stand. And grace is not just a one-time event where we accept Christ, but grace is something we live in, we stand in, we make our lives in living in the way of salvation. But living in grace won't exempt us from all the hard things in life. Indeed, our passage from Romans 5 today talks about afflictions and the need for endurance and the reality that things aren't always the way they should be, and so we need hope. Life will still be hard when we accept Christ, and life will still be hard when we live for Christ. Sin won't permanently disappear from us, and temptations won't always be gone in this world, but we have grace to stand in. And the love of God poured out into our lives through the Holy Spirit, and that is the grace that will lead us on to become more and more like Jesus, more holy closer to be made perfect in love. Not only will our relationship with God change, but we will be changed. So today, today whether you struggle with the tendency to minimize faith and make it just a little part of your life that you've already taken care of, or whether you struggle with making things more complicated than they really are and lots of rules that you have to follow, Hear this today, that we stand in God's grace, that God's love is poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. There is more to the life of God than we can imagine, and yet entering it and living it is simpler than we could have dreamed. We just believe. Today, maybe you're beginning to realize that you've been on the porch for a long time. You have never really entered in through the doorway of salvation. That God has awakened you to the need 
that you have for God, for forgiveness, for new life. God has left the door open. Jesus has already done the work. Come on inside. Come on in. Or today, maybe you know that you've walked through that doorway of salvation, that you have accepted Jesus at some time, and you've stepped into the house of salvation, and you got to the foyer right past the door, and you stopped there. You've seen the foyer, you've seen the whole house, right? And you haven't taken it any deeper. No need to go much further. Well, today, Jesus is inviting you deeper and further. Jesus is seeking to pour out his love in your life through the Holy Spirit to invite you to really live in the house and not just hang out in the foyer, to go deeper with God, to be made more like Jesus, to open up your life to the Holy Spirit and thus to love and for the way that you live and work to really be transformed. This is salvation. Go deeper into the house. Ask God today to pour out the Holy Spirit in your life. Or today, maybe you know that you have gone farther into the house of salvation, of relationship with God, that you're trying to live for God, that you're realizing that there's still more to experience. But maybe you're also experiencing that affliction that Romans talks about. And today, may that affliction produce endurance, and that endurance character, and that character hope, hope that's not disappointed, hope that's made real because God's Spirit is at work in you. God is at work sanctifying you, making you holy. May it be made real today. Yes, today, as the scripture says, we can have peace with God. We can stand in grace. Whatever your next move is, whether it's getting off the porch and going through the door into God's salvation and accepting Christ, whether it's seeking to go deeper in your relationship with God and asking the Holy Spirit to be at work in your life, whether it's making up your mind, whatever this current affliction is, is that you are going to push through to the hope today because God's at work in your life. Whatever your next step is, may you take it today. May you go deeper, because God is at work saving us. Will you pray with me? God, we are thankful for the peace with you that comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us access to this grace that has changed our lives and transformed us, given us life abundant now and life eternal on the other side. We pray, God, that you would continue to work through your Holy Spirit and each person gathered here, each person watching online, Lord, that you would help them to take the next step deeper into relationship with you. God who saves us, continue to come. Transform us, we pray. Amen.